For over a decade, the telecommunications industry worldwide has engaged in a fierce debate relating to the opening up of unused wireless spectrum between TV channels for use with unlicensed devices. On January 30th, 2017, the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago published a document as part of its first round of public consultation on the authorization framework for the accommodation of white space radio communications devices. White space refers to unused broadcasting frequencies in the wireless spectrum. Television networks leave gaps between channels for buffering purposes, creating unused frequencies which can be used to deliver widespread broadband internet. So the purpose of this framework, as most frameworks um, prepared, consulted on and published by the authority, is to provide the terms of reference for the regulatory oversight of white space devices in Trinidad and Tobago to allow for both its use and its managed use so that it doesn't affect other users of the national spectrum resource. Um, so this is why protecting existing incumbent services is a key component of this framework. And as you would see when you take a read of the document, hopefully the full document, um, the flavor of most of the rules that we're proposing is essentially one, one first and foremost to protect the existing users in the band, because they are also important. Um, they are the, our TV broadcasters, of course, for one. And of course, in doing so, still allow this, the, these devices, this technology to foster and to be used to innovate, as well as to um, satisfy any needs or any interests that um, users may have. In February 2017, continuing public consultation, TAT hosted an ICT forum entitled White Space Devices, Opportunities for Trinidad and Tobago. Without a doubt, white space devices are game changers that can facilitate government's objective to improve nationwide ICT access, especially in underserved and densely populated urban areas. What brought TV white spaces on the ministry's radar is purely economics. It is no secret of the current fiscal challenges that we are facing as a country. So while the ministry was looking at how then do we go about rolling out our national broadband plan, our national broadband network, in the face of our economic constraints. And our research indicated that a number of nations, such as South Africa, Kenya, have been using TV white spaces as a means of getting lower cost broadband penetration with a wider reach. And results like this kept coming up over and over again. The ability for TV white spaces to change the dynamics as it, as it were of how broadband can be provisioned in Trinidad and Tobago. White space devices offer operators an alternative to mainstream technologies to provide broadband services and associated spectrum bands over long distances and difficult terrain. As TAT outlined in its framework document, there is a high demand for spectrum for fixed and mobile broadband fueled by the rapidly expanding need for broadband connectivity as well as ubiquitous mobility. The growing search worldwide for more spectrum to facilitate broadband development has generated increased interest in innovative ways to use available spectrum. Keith Sinclair from Adaptrum, one of the founding member companies of the Dynamic Spectrum Alliance, outlined their role. Uh, so DSA is a uh, truly global uh, cross-industry alliance of uh, companies that have, and, biz and organizations that have come together to really advocate for laws and regulations to make Spectrum more, make more effective and efficient use of uh, underutilized Spectrum. So how can one convert TV white space into a viable service such as high-speed broadband? What we can do with these TV white spaces is make more effective use and make them available on a shared or secondary basis to other services like broadband internet. The key in any technology or implementation that is going to use these TV white spaces is that it has to protect the incumbent services. So I know this is a, a little bit cheesy, but the, 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 the real concept of a TV white space is to take what many of us experience today is a, a, stat, a TV screen full of static and turn it into, I think, a valuable service, namely high-speed broadband. 
And really, this is how TV white space in a lot of the world has been used today. It's provision fixed wireless network access to broadband services. So uh, moving into the TT context, um, and it's also very similar for many of the Caribbean as well, many of the Caribbean countries. Yes, um, we have independent um, jurisdictions, small island states. We generally have small geographies. We relatively have low populations and low population densities, except maybe in some of the urban centers at certain times of the day. Um, in many instances, there has been a sort of a debate in terms of the digital switchover imperative related to switching from analog to digital television. And there's been a fair amount of unused spectrum. And what I've noted um, in many of the, discu the discourse or the discussion so far is the fact that um, what has been driven particularly from where the DSA concepts originated in the more developed countries where they talked about the artificial spectrum crunch, they talked about something of the nature of what is going on in the lower left. They talked about the fact that everything is so congested spectrally. But in reality, when you think about what goes on in Trinidad and Tobago and perhaps in many of the other jurisdictions, it's a little bit different. We aren't so spectrally congested especially in the spaces that are being considered in, in this particular forum. We aren't as badly off as many of the others. So the question then is, why would we even want to, you know, what is the driver for us? And as Keith suggested, one of them could be the whole notion of, of, of broadband access and, and, and getting coverage to, to those areas, those tough to, to, to cover areas. And as Kim herself mentioned, given the sort of the nice real estate and the propagation characteristics of the, tele, the TV band, you have a nice opportunity to do just that. And, and, and that's what we're working with. But just to be clear, it's not really about spectral congestion in the Trinidad context. It's a little bit more about the fact that we have a lot of spectrum and we just need to figure out how to use it. I mean, it's there, use it. Recognizing the potential benefits to Trinidad and Tobago from the use of these technologies, the government has begun initiatives. What we are proposing at the ministry is not only to learn from others, we want to become content creators. Now that TAT has done the work and started the authorization framework for the use of dynamic spectrum, the government is keen to move forward with pilots so that we can understand how can TV wide spaces fit within the context of our unique environment, our unique terrain, and our unique existing network infrastructure? So I am pleased to advise that the ministry has um, already started conversations with TAT and other interested parties to realize TV wide spaces pilots in 2017. To just give you an idea of where we are on a global basis with uh, TV white space um, regulations, um, uh, just this map sort of highlights it fairly quickly. Um, the US and the UK were two of the first countries to put white space regulations in place. And uh, with that, there are now fairly large scale uh, commercial networks using, using TV white space uh, for a number, of, mostly for uh, broadband services, but those could be for both commercial as well as uh, uh, some community based. Uh, non-profit applications. There's significant, including here uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, regulatory efforts um, in, in the works. Um, other countries that are actually pursuing TV white space regulation are Jamaica, uh, fairly close to home, uh, Malawi in Africa, South Africa, and uh, the other category, I think, showing that the, the, the global interest in TV white space are all the, the pre-regulation -trial, pre trials and uh, pilot networks that are really sort of allowing countries to see how T3 Five Space really serves their unique connectivity requirements. consultation but that's just the first round of consultation so based on comments received the document will be revised 
enhanced and put out for a second round of consultation, hopefully four weeks thereafter, but we're thinking more four to six weeks. And after that second round of consultation, it'll be revised further based on further comments, and then we'll move to approve and publish. And once it's published, those are the rules. And once we have the rules established, the further work that we'll have to do, which we've already begun, so it shouldn't take too much longer, is to actually identify the frequencies and the other operating parameters that um, we need to publish for the database administrators to be aware of, as well as to start that process of approving database administrators and certifying white space devices.